even better. Okay, my name is Glendon Cameron, and if you're new to this, understand I do the webinar first, and then I uh, answer questions. Today is day six. It's pretty special because this thing is going uh, a little bit better than I thought it would. So it's going to get rougher, just letting you know. But since it's four o'clock and people are still coming in, let's just rock and roll. I want to say thanks to everyone that came out. And if you don't have a pen and paper, go get one. Use your computer because you'll be taking notes and there'll be activities. All right. This is every day. I know some people are like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But you're going to do it because you want to be the best hustler that you can be. Right? Right. I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. This is serious business, folks. Serious. All right. Yesterday, we had a few uh, hiccups with this one. Uh, there was certain tasks. Like I said, if you're new, there's a task every day. And the forgiven, the forgiveness letter was an issue because I reached out, talked to some people, and there are cases that if you write this letter, that the person who gets it may be offended. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I had an issue with my mother years ago, and I told her the truth, and she didn't like it, and she didn't talk to me for two years. So what I'm going to say to you and this is purely up to you. I'm not going to say do it or don't do it. I'm going to say write the letter because that's parts for you. Write it. Just go ahead and write it. Now, to give it or not, before you give it, think about it. Now, if the person isn't in bad health, I don't see what the problem could be, but I don't know everything. That's Once again, this is your decision. I, I still encourage you to write the forgiveness letter. And I ask you to seek guidance, medical or spiritual, on whether to give it. Because, like I said, you know, I told my mom the truth. She didn't talk to me for two years. She apologized eventually. And part of the problem with this kind of stuff is that when people continue to do the wrong thing, they build up this wall of resistance of doing the right thing. It just becomes impossible for them. And that's one of the reasons that this stuff is part of 30 days to $2,500. Because not only do I want you to make money, but I want you to be a good person. Because if you're a good person, your life will be so much richer. People will do stuff for you. Opportunities will just drop in your lap. I mean, it's just a totally different group. It's like you get that spiritual, emotional, physical, health, wealth, and money too. You know, I'm about the whole nine yards, not just get money, get money, because all of us right now know someone that has money and they're miserable because they haven't worked on this stuff. I'm talking about the whole enchilada. I'm talking about everything, the big cool, everything, because when you get emotionally wealthy, that can even bring you more money. Because you're, you're open to things you wouldn't be when you're emotionally immature. And just because you're chronologically 30, 40, 50, 60, you can still be emotionally immature as a child because certain people are stunned. And with the forgiveness letter, if you're trying to insert that letter to a person who's emotionally stunned, I can see how that may cause problems because it's going to become, well, they have the problem and I don't. Oh, also for the new people. If you have a question, just go ahead and type it in there and I'll answer the questions later. But be careful with this because, like I said, I don't want to get you in like, I don't want you to have a guilt trip that you give a letter to someone and they're like, I have a heart attack and they, and they kick off and take the dirt nap. I don't want that to happen to you. So tread carefully on that, but still write the letter because it will still have the impact of releasing those feelings from you. So. And I got this in my email box this morning. And anyway, this this right here, I'm not tr I'm not going to try to offend anybody. I'm just going to give you my viewpoint on God. Do I believe in God? Yes, I do. Do I believe in religion? No, I don't. Do I believe in every time something good happens? Praise God! No. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, 
I used to believe in horoscopes and I used to believe in fate. Essentially, when you believe in those things, you're pretty much saying that your life path is predetermined, which removes choice from you. It pretty much puts you in perpetual victimhood status. So when I came across The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murray, book recommendation there, I started to rethink a lot of my thoughts. I started to rethink a lot of the things I believed in. And when I stopped praying, because, you know, I grew up in the South, son of the South, grew up in the Bible Belt, went to Mount, By- Mount, Mount Zion Baptist Church, Mount Caramel Baptist Church. And even as a child, I questioned a lot of things. And this is the remarkable thing that happened in my life. I don't know about your life. I'm just speaking from my position and my walk of life and my experience. When I stopped praying and uh, started doing, my life changed. I accomplished more by having goals, creating an action plan, not quitting, than praying all day long. Now, my brother and I, when we were kids, we used to have this philosophical conversation about praying. Because, understand, now I'm not trying to offend anyone. But if you pray on something, then go out and start doing it, you're pretty much activating universal law. And... My opinion, just my opinion, once again, not trying to offend anyone, God is pretty much hands off. What we do down here is what we do. Everything that we need, we're given, it's about developing self. That's one of the reasons I'm a big proponent of Asian philosophy. It's not like you're born smart, you get smart. It's not like you're born strong, you get strong. And that really works for my personality of my life is the way that it is because of choices I made versus some big entity, i.e. God in the sky saying, I'm going to make you suffer for 20 years. When I was suffering, it it was because of poor choices. It wasn't because of God. It wasn't because of, you know, it, it wasn't. And the thing is, I want you to look at this. How many people you know that you would consider evil, bad people who from the outside looking in have great guys? And this is when people start saying, well, yeah, he's got money, but his wife cheats on him. You start seeing all this stuff to make yourself feel better because it it may not be true. I know people who are wealthy. And for the sake of this conversation, I define wealthy. Got a million cash in the bank or more. I know one guy, he and his wife, they're they're about, he's about 60. She's about 50. These two look like high school sweethearts. They have four kids, grown. Kids are awesome kids. And this guy's been rich since he was 27. Um, he would actually disagree with what I'm saying because he's a very religious person and he's, he's, he's rolling. And I know another guy who's not so religious. I mean, same thing. Wife and him are tight. They built a business together. I think sometimes they have sex in the office. Yes, I think they do. And they're, they're, so this whole thing of what I call hating and being envious of folks who have things you don't kind of comes from this stuff of not really taking ownership and accountability of your life because some of the things that I have pulled off by activating Earl Nightingale principles, activating the principles of the subconscious mind. I mean, I'll just tell you one thing real quick. Typically, when I want to date a certain type of woman, I create a list, physical attributes, characteristics, write it down in an intent format And she shows up anywhere from three days to two weeks later. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it works for me. And that's kind of my thing with the God thing. I'm not like any other. I'm going to say I'm a different kind of black person with that. Because you you hear rappers who are talking about spanking hoes. And then they accept their award like to all praises. I mean, it's just incongruent. It, It is just very, very incongruent. So... Yes, I believe, and no, I am not going to, you're going to start hearing me like, praise the Lord, and all this other stuff, because I believe in personal development, I believe in personal power, and I believe that if you decide to make your life better, you can. Okay, enough of that. Now, let's talk about yesterday's activity. Did you start your list? Seriously, did you? Because I'm going to be on this and I'm on it for your for your personal benefit. 
you do this stuff, you will see money in your life. You will see money. You will see prosperity. You will see a change in your business. The list is super, super important. Now, for those of you who are new, there's always new people in here every day. Each day links up to the day before. <laughs> and just to let you know, this Sunday, there's two sessions. Now, there's uh, going to be a makeup session. That's not free. That's for folks who are in the group. So if you want to be there Sunday night, uh, I think I got it for 9 p.m. Because I'll be putting it out in the group only. It won't be on the mass email list. We're going to talk about this because the way that this program is designed, it's action based. If you come into this space and you're not ready or willing to work, you're wasting your time. By building this list and going through these steps, you will improve your business. If you don't have one, you'll start a business. You, you got to make a list. You have got to start working on this stuff. Now, this is another thing that I deeply, deeply believe in. And this is one of the reasons that I started this course. You, you need to start a business. Uh, these are. I don't even know how to define them. I don't want to say these are uncertain times. These are. Some of the most innovative times, and these are. Where life is just different. You have more resources than you've ever had before if your mind is open to them. But I think everyone needs a business, even if you have a job, even if you're happy with your job, you still need a business because you will start to learn certain skills. You'll learn how to make money from your efforts. You'll increase your self-confidence and it will help you as a person. It'll open new doors. I mean, the thing about my business that I love so much is it introduces me to new people all the time. I meet some cool ass people every week from all over the world. And that is one of the main benefits of my business. So do yourself and do your family a favor of starting a business. It can be one of the best gifts that you can give to yourself. It can be one of the best gifts that you can give to your children. It is just that important. Dun, 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 dun. All right, we're going to jump into day six. This is your first task, skill set drill. In my consulting practice, I meet a lot of people that are bright, extremely intellectual, have a lot to offer, and they tend to downplay their assets. I don't know if it's that humble thing. I don't know if it's a religious thing, but I've met some seriously sharp people that were sitting on assets made of platinum and they weren't showcasing them because they didn't think they were that special. So this is your activity for day six. Write down everything you know how to do well or you're just good at it. Everything. Everything. I give you everything. Love you long time. Everything. I don't care if you know how to shave a chinchilla. And just for you to know, that's going to be a video that's popping up Sunday. And it's really horrible. But it's funny as shit. If you know how to rollerblade, if you know how to skateboard, if you know how to parasail, if you know how to draw, if you know how to do voiceovers, if you know how to speak in us, I mean, there anything that you can do well or just good at, it goes on your list of skill sets. If you're a good writer, put that down. If you're a good if you're a good negotiator, put that down. If you're the person in the family, everyone calls, it's like, okay, Ma and Pa are at it again. You go over and you facilitate the, you're like the salt talks. <laughs> you're, you're like, um, you just, you're that, you're like the negotiator from the movie. You make these things happen. You bring people together. If you are a good speak, anything, do not do what I call personal discounts. Like, well, you know, yeah, the family, don't, no, don't say, if you're saying that, put, put it on the list. So that is your task for this weekend. Everything, put it on the list everything. Once you create this list, rank yourself. What is your best, best skill? What, what is that? What is your best skill? What, what would it be? And for you to get to this, you have to create the list and then really start to think. 
and think, 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 think. Say you think you're good at um, acting. Okay. So what you do, actually, well, I've got a little head. What you do is you get a friend, family member, someone, and sit down and show them your list and validate what you think is good. Because sometimes our friends and family can see greatness in us when we can't see it ourselves. And just take it, that list to one person, then take it to another person that knows you well. And if two people come up kind of with the same thing, that's your best skill, even though you may think your best skill is shaving chinchillas. Seriously, because what you have to do is start to incorporate a greater perspective and some more introspective because it takes time to get to know you when you're not doing it. If that makes any sense to you, many people are just kind of existing and they're not really, really sitting down thinking, hey, this is who I am. Hey, this is what I like. Many of the things that you like like say you like baseball and your dad like that's something you inherited from your dad not saying it's a bad thing but what do you really like what did you just like oh you know what do i really like i mean start really thinking about that stuff now once you get your best skill you're going to go to task rabbit if it's available in your area or if you can't go to task rabbit you're going to go to craigslist and you're going to create an ad in gigs and you're going to advertise your skill and you're going to put a price tag on it. You're going to devise a business plan. And your goal for this is to sell it to one stranger. And the goal, the time frame is once you flesh it out, talk to your people, what's your best skill? What's not your best skill? Once you do all of that, then, you know, this is when you come here and you devise a business plan. Right? Once again, day one, there was something that was really, really strange. And a lot of people were like blown away. And this woman is posed to make more money than she's ever made in her life. Doing this one extremely simple thing. It will crack you up. So you're going to devise a business plan. You're going to price it. And your goal after you do all this is to sell it to one stranger. No friends this time. You can't use your friends. Because some of these activities, you can use your friends. Other times, you have to go out and just talk to strangers. Because you have a business. Once you run out of friends, you're going to be selling to what? Who? Who? What? Strangers. <laughs> so the sooner that you become comfortable talking to strangers, selling to strangers, the more successful your business is going to be. Everyone is kind of like waiting for that person to come in and be the advocate for their business and do all the selling. If it happens, it's nice, it's wonderful, but the reality is you have to be an advocate for your own business. So that's, that's your other task for this day. Now, let's talk about what's happening. We're on day six, and, it's, and let me just tell you, we're still in the the beginning stages of this it's going to get much harder and the reason that the course is designed like that is that's what a business is going to do there are a few people they start a business that gets easier most of us we start a business it gets harder it gets more challenging and this course is designed to prepare you for that process versus just, you know hey here's a few tips this is what you do you go do this and then after those ideals wear out what are you going to do by learning how to deal with adversity, by learning how to be a problem solver, your business can keep going because this is something that happens frequently. And don't be afraid of this. You start off with your business, right? And in your mind, you're like, hey, I'm going to sell dumbbells. And then you're, you've got the dumbbell factory making you dumbbells and you start selling and then you start going to customers and then you realize that, hey, if you use you change the shape of the dumbbell, then it'll be an easier sell. Don't be afraid to pivot on your business. If the data, the feedback that you're getting says, hey, this is a good idea to change this product because it happens all of the time. My goal when I started Conundrum Publishing was to write one book. Then other opportunities for, I mean, write that one storage auction book sell it, you know, get like maybe 50 to 100 grand, work on the great American novel. And I received two book deals. 
<laughs> the first offer was five for five thousand. And when I received that deal, I was making more than that per month on my own. And the second one was for ten thousand. And when I received that deal, I had made more money than that on my own. So it didn't make any sense for me to sign a book deal. And my whole thing changed. So as you go through this process, as you start doing this stuff, you're going to maybe discover some gold that you didn't see before. So don't give up. Don't become, good Lord, I could just bitch slap Glendon. This shit's hard. Don't, don't, don't. Well, you might want to, you know, if you want to say that, if it makes you feel good, go ahead. Cool. But don't, don't give up. I started five businesses and they were turkeys. And the lessons gained from those five businesses made business number six take off. Business number seven, take off. Business number eight, take off. Business number nine, take off. Business number 10, which is this one, Conundrum Media, formerly Conundrum Publishing. Because if you don't give up and you keep learning and learning and learning, one day you're going to walk in the room and you're going to know who's the decision maker is. When I was in sales, hold on a second, I need a fruit punch break. <clears throat> when I walked in the room, I knew who the decision maker was because when I first got into sales, I sucked. I absolutely sucked. I would go in. I would ask a lot of questions. I was nervous. I would blow stuff. Then I walked into this situation and there was this guy that I had never talked to before, but he was in on the meeting and he introduced himself. And you start to kind of pick up on clues because as you get your reps, as you, as you build your experience, Certain patterns emerged. And I was like, okay, this guy's in here. And just the way he sat at the table, I knew he was heavy. He never introduced himself as a decision maker. He just acted that way. And a lot of times they will do what I call is like get under the coattails of the guy that they have as the front man. And was sitting there and the guy was asking questions. He was asking questions. And then I took a long pause and I made them. And I was like, are you okay? And I said, Dave. Let's just be totally unvarnished here. I've been talking to Will, but you're the guy. You've seen the numbers. Is it a yes or is it a no? And what are you stalling? Because if it's a yes, you're trying to get better numbers. If it's a no, why am I here? And then say nothing. And he just kind of leaned back and started laughing. You got me. Well, this is where we are. We like your numbers, but we're worried about scalability. And it was the first time that I was in a situation and I knew what was going on. I was just like, oh, my God, because so many times you get in these situations and you're just blind. You just you don't know. You don't have the right information. You're not asking the right questions. And it was just like I knew and I closed the deal. But I wouldn't have got to that point if it wasn't for all those 1,000 other jacked up appointments I went on. I wouldn't have got there. So don't give up because one day you will walk in the room and you'll know what's going on and it's going to feel so good. It's going to feel so good. You're just like, you're going to be like, oh, this is what it's like. I mean, it's a feeling that's just hard to relate to unless you've experienced it. Okay, now this is another thing for a lot of you, you know, for those of you who have businesses already, this is not so much applicable because you've already taken that jump. But for those of you who are new and just are kind of figuring out your thing, you got to jump into the pool. And if you've ever high dived off a board and you land wrong, you know, water hurts velocity and impact it's amazing how that soft stuff if you hit it hard enough because you ever seen someone come off a high uh, of a really really high diving board and hit the water and if you notice they kind of pause before they go under it's like bam then they go under that crap hurts it hurts <laughs> that's the why in the olympics when they go in the water from those high dives, you ever notice they put their hands together to create that that brace to go through the water because it is like it can be extremely painful. And that's what you're facing when you um, jump off the diving board into unknown waters. You don't land right. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. You may get bruised. Your people may laugh and point who are sitting around the pool. And what you do is you come out the pool and you shake it off. And you get back up there and you jump again and you jump again and you jump again and you jump again because 
if you don't, all of the lessons that you've learned will be for nothing. They'll just be immaterial. They will be worthless. And I'm going to give you an exercise that I learned years ago. And I want you to do this tonight. In your mind, I want you to imagine yourself as you are jumping off a tall diving board. And I want you to see yourself doing three flips and entering the water gracefully. Now, it sounds easy. Some of you may get it right off. Some of you, you're going to be amazed at how you're screwing this up in your mind. And that's going to be a signal to your self-doubt and your lack of confidence because that's happening inside. And if you've been a member of my YouTube channel and you've, the inner world is more important than the outer world. The inner world dictates the outer world. And when I first started doing this exercise in like, what, 2000? I was screwing it up. I was hitting the water crazy and it was in my mind. That is how messed up my inner world was. My sandbox wasn't groomed. I had all of these fears, inferiority complexes, confidence was shot. This was coming from, you know, the divorce. I was a messed up puppy and daily I would practice this. Then one day I started going in the water straight. It took effort to straighten out my mind. So understand. If you are in a position where things aren't working out, you're making a lot of mistakes, good, because you're learning at an accelerated rate. <laughs> I love this bull. For the business owners, this is your goal for this weekend. Tear down your business. This weekend, you're going to strip away everything that does not make money, it is not critical to your business. You're going to, everything, if it's not making money and you don't need it, it's gone. You're going to take it out of your business. There, I, this comes from a consulting client I had, and this was a long-term consulting project. And I found out that she was spending 80% of her time on shit that didn't make money. And it was just, I mean, it, it looks good. You know, you're doing this, running this report. And it took a week to really get her to get it. But when she stripped all of this stuff out of her business, and once again, let me be really, really clear. This isn't delegate this to someone else. This is if it's not imperative to making money and you don't need it for your business, it has to go. She went from doing gross revenues of $60,000 a month to $130,000 a month in a quarter by getting rid of shit that didn't make money. Now, why did she start making more money? Because when she got rid of the 80% of stuff that wasn't making money, she took that time and put it toward money-making activities, and it's like her business transformed overnight. Now, this happens a lot because when you build your business, it's just you. You can't see it from the outside like I can. You can't see it. And you know, once I, you know, when I say long term, it was two weeks I worked with her, and it was just like amazing. And she treated me like a stripper. I got a tip. She gave me a big ass tip. <laughs> she put it in the G verse G string. That shit was funny. So for you, if you have a business, even if it's a small bit, whatever, pinpoint what makes money and get rid of what doesn't make money. The results will blow your mind once you go through that exercise. Now, here's a way to help you get to that. Now, I, this is from Earl Nightingale. I call it the power of six. And this is something I do frequently. Every morning, five, seven days a week, write down six things you need to do. No more than six. Don't do 10. Don't do 20. Six. Start at one. Work on it until you're done. Wash, rinse, and repeat. This will help you get things moving much faster. One, it creates a priority list. It defines what needs to be done. And it gives you direction. It's a compass for your day. And I want you to think about this. You do this, you have six things, right? And you do it 30 days in a row. That's 180 action items done. You may start doing more stuff in a week than you've been doing in months because when your day is unorganized, when it's not prioritized, when it's just kind of like, well, I'm going to kind of get up and do this, I'm going to kind of get up and do this. It just doesn't happen as quick as it could. But when you get that action point, the action plan, and when you're like really on it, 
you will see productivity gains that just blow your mind. So this is a way for those of you who are like, how am I going to, you, you got to create a list because you know your business better than I do. So you, you just start like, okay, and ask yourself, does this make money? Okay, no, it doesn't make money. But do I need to have this to make money, even though it doesn't make money? And if the answer is no, it, get rid of it. It may be some of your favorite stuff to do, but get rid of it. And you will see more money in your business. And, all right, I'm, I'm going to answer this before we get to the questions, because these are usually the first questions. On the video, my last video on YouTube right now, anyone that wants to join the Facebook group, all of the links are there, $29.99 per month, $199, because the emails, people have spam filters on, or they forget, or maybe they're shaving a chinchilla or something, and they don't really get to the stuff. So if you want to join, lifetime access is the best thing, because there's a special thing I'm doing once I'm done with these 30 days, so you definitely want to be part of that. All right. And I'm getting better because I'm trying to keep these down to 45 minutes. So with that, okay, and here's the video. They're right there. Everything, day six, sign up, everything, every, everything's right there. And now it is Q&A time. Let's just put that up because I'm going to do something later with that. So what I'm going to do, so I'm at the dashboard. Here we go. What's up, David? <laughs> Happy V Day, Tracy. Uh, this is April. In my forgiveness letter, I didn't use the word forgive. I framed it that the person hurt my feelings, but end up being a good thing, and that this letter was to thank them. No offense at all. Perfect. Perfect. That's using your mind. Uh, you should write the letter even if the person is dead. Leslie Ann. Definitely. Yes. Yes, it is a great book. Uh, Dwayne, forgiveness letter. Guy's probably already dead, but I wrote it anyhow and sent it to the organization he was in. Boy Scout, events happened as a kid 40 plus years ago, and I still remember what he said, and it's been a milestone, a millstone around my neck. Tough to let it go, <clears throat> but who needs an anchor when you're running the marathon? Well done, dude, because I'm telling you, that shit holds you back. Uh, Corey Brown, faith without work is dead. People have to work. Prayer helps, but you have to work. Corey. Uh, Tracy, I downloaded The Power of the Subconscious Mind yesterday on Audible. Just started listening. Good stuff. Thanks for the recommendation. Sure thing. This is Aaron Cur Glendon. I currently live in London. My dad lives in Florida. Should I move there after I, after I finish high school in the UK? Any advice? Uh, that's a personal decision. I can't really tell you that. I mean... You got to think that one out on your own. I don't know. Do you want to move to Florida? Uh, that's that's a, that's a little bit bigger than what I can do. I, I mean, you have to make that decision because that's your life. That's that's big. Uh, Leslie, I know you're not different. We just don't talk about it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, turbulent Times from Michael. Disruptive Times, Corey. Um, Aaron. What do you think about comedy voiceovers for a YouTube channel? I know it's been done before a lot, but I believe I can do better or just as good. In one of the earlier days, we talked about execution. Everyone knew what the Seattle Seahawks was going to do. Everyone knew what Denver was going to do in the Super Bowl. Everyone knew what was going to happen, and Seattle executed better, and they won. So it's about execution. I would say do it and start doing it and just see how, you know, well, I'm not going to say see how it goes, but create a plan to make it work. This is Greg. What's up, G? I'm thinking about going to put my fiber gigs up on Craigslist and charge what I'm worth. But I'll, but they don't charge to place an ad for service listings. Craigslist is going through a major overhaul right now. Uh, that may not be the case today, but it might be the case tomorrow. I would definitely put your ads up on Craigslist. Uh, Aaron, are you watching The House of Cards Season 2? No, I haven't gotten into it, but I love that show. I love that Kevin Spacey character. Uh, Jacob, how many emails do you usually get in a day? How do you handle the volume? Uh, Two-part question. I used to get, um, shit, 500 to 600 emails a day. And now that's down to maybe 80 to 100. 
I prioritize uh, there are some emails I don't answer it because they're crazy so if it's in the crazy <laughs> bin I don't mess with it and I just hit up the ones that I have to uh, Dwayne hate leather was easy could have ridden that with a stick on the gas for you <laughs> I told you the hate leather was easy that's an easy one but tell me how do you feel after you did it uh, Walter is there an option to join groups for users that don't work on Facebook uh, no because when I start trying to do that, I'm creating two platforms. People don't get stuff. And it's just my advice to you. Make a dummy Facebook page. Don't let anyone know you're on Facebook and join the group. Uh, Tasha, happy V-Day, bro. Great sessions. We'll learn, will we learn about eBooks in these sessions? Uh, not really. That's going to be in the Hustler Mindset Project. I'll touch on it, but it's eBooks is... I could sit down and talk about ebooks for two months straight every day. That's how much this is a lot that goes into ebooks. Deb, I just started a business in December 2013. I put up my first website, but no money yet. How long before I should look to get paid and how long should I wait? Affiliate websites are tricky. Um, I mean, just the beginning is like 90 days. Because it could take 90 days to six months for your stuff to populate properly on Google and to increase enough tracking to get you some coin. Um, I don't mess with those pages because I'm more of a creative guy. I know people making killer money with it. But the thing is, you need pages. You need maybe 100, 150. And it's, it's, to me, it's unappealing. But like I said, I know people making money. Because once you get them together and when you have one hosting account, a lot of money can be happening. But... It's just not my thing. Uh, Brian, I've done m and and had to make a list for that. Is this the same kind of list or what? Yes. Uh, James, let's talk about Sea Monkey. First time I talked with you, see how things, how fast things become irrelevant. You have to keep moving. Yeah, exactly. Sea uh, Monkey was an HTML editor that I recommended to use to create your Craigslist, uh, make your Craigslist pictures pop. But guess what? <laughs> you can't do that anymore on Craigslist. Uh, Chris wrote four letters for the ex-girlfriend that I had a bad split with, hadn't seen in two years. She said she was going to amount to something bigger and better and explain why she cheated. Went out to eat by myself and worked online with my laptop at a restaurant today. Found out she was a waitress and told her <laughs> I wanted fries with that. I should have given the letter to Thanks <laughs> Dude, telling you, it is, is life is interesting when you're active. Uh, Edward. Are you getting better uh, responses, donations from the participants? Uh, it's still the same. It's still, you know, the Sparta people. Uh, there's been a few outside people, but 70% you know, of the folks who donated already know. Greg Burke, is there any money in being a web hosting reseller? Yes, but you need massive, massive volume. David. I hear what you're saying. I love to get more into the specifics with digital product creation and marketing. I've been applying a lot of ideas and I heard about ebooks for the uh, app reskinning. Okay, you're in the Hustle Mindset Project. Uh, once I get myself back up to speed, we're going to get back with, like I said in the video, I owe you guys some stuff. We're going to get back with creating digital products. That's going to be like, essentially, what's happening is the business stuff, the quick hustles are going to go the 30 days to 2500 and then I'm going to get back into the deeper, more esoteric stuff in the Hustler Mindset Project. Website question. Uh, Deb Dwayne, tell her to post to as many relevant forums as she can. This is for you, Deb, and include her, her URL in the signature. Don't spam. Don't even pimp your site. Answer questions that are relevant to your site. And every time you post, you'll be including a cross link back to your site. Pretty good advice. true this stuff does takes time all right a lot of people must be with their boo for valentine's day because i got through these questions quick uh aaron do you watch youtube videos if so which ones thanks um i watch bodybuilding weightlifting videos um kino yoga i love her i'm in love with her but i also do yoga for the folks who don't know i don't really watch a lot of business stuff i read business books my YouTube watching is more like your YouTube watching. If I have a need, like last nine months, I was able to go from deadlifting like 200 pounds to like 600 
and I got that from stuff I found on YouTube so it's kind of like what's going on what I need to learn more about uh, Chris will you be covering conventional or guerrilla advertising at some point in this series I will be talking whoa hold on yes everything I'll be talking about will be unconventional and guerrilla because the thing is conventional advertising doesn't work like I can already tell you about tomorrow day seven I'll be talking about social media which kind of goes to your question uh, I learned so much and I spent I had an assistant and we were doing social media hard for six months taking metrics and what I found out would just blow your mind uh, we'll discuss that tomorrow uh, Chris quick crash look quick <laughs> sorry quick cash look around your house anything you don't need take it to an auction house ideal came out of one of your books yep that was actually in uh, making money a to z 2011 actually in all of the storage auction books uh Daniqua, i love yoga i would like to become certified in the near future do it yoga is big business now uh Dwayne, unconventional advertising work i have two plan customers waiting for yesterday's exercise <laughs> Uh, Byron, metrics. I'm sorry. You know, my, like I said, you don't have a speech impediment. Metrics looks like your numbers. I already saw it. I already saw Craigslist, Joe. I thought that was very interesting. You know they got that from uh, one one red paper clip. This was one, like, one of the first internet things where this guy had a paper clip and he traded it for something else. and tra He traded it all the way up to like an RV <laughs> going around the country. Uh, Jacob, when you were working all those hours in the storage auction business, did you read much or did you just focus on work? I actually read every day because with auctions, it's pretty slow when you're waiting for the auction to start. So I had a lot of downtime waiting for auctions. All right, paperclip man, he got a house. That's right. So you know what I'm talking about. That's where they got that thing from Craigslist Joe. I read a lot of books in my car. Uh, actually used I got one of the Verizon air cards so I can list shit like I would buy shit and list shit you know I was truly a mobile warrior okay so that kind of looks like all of the questions and since I know a lot of you have booze and stuff I'm going to keep this at like 45 minutes and for those of you who are in the hustler mindset or join the group this will be up probably tomorrow oh Bam, there's more questions. Uh, David, Craigslist Joe was great. It ties in what you're having us do. Get out of your comfort zone for success. Definitely. Um, I'll tell you a quick, let's see, I'm going to ask a question before I go into the story. Uh, I actually look, I follow Josh's blog. Uh, this is from Michael. Currently reading The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. I think he's a good dude to follow. Dina. And we're off. Gold Country Resellers Roundup set for this summer. Woohoo! Thanks for <laughs> Glenda for everything. Uh, Aaron, do you do you know and how do you feel about the Bilderberg Group? Uh, that's kind of like Matrix stuff to me. There's this, you know, for those that know, Bilderberg Groups, the Cross uh, Skull and Bones. There's these esoteric groups that literally run the world. And um, typically, you can create your own economy, your own subset, and they don't really impact you unless they start a war. Now, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> James, I have to go to 7-Eleven to get nachos. Let's end this. You're cracking me up. Okay, it is 444. Due to the holiday, I'm shutting this puppy down. But I will be back tomorrow. And for those of you who are in the Hustler Mindset Project or in the group, there's going to be two sessions on Sunday. So I'll send out emails. And if you want to join, go to the video. Everything's right there. And I'll add you to the group. All right, I just want to say uh, thanks for you great folks for sharing your Friday with me. And uh, I will see you tomorrow.